Maximum war. Punch it, Sulu. Is the parking brake on? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I, I'm not sure what's wrong. I'll, I'll fix it in just- Have you disengaged the external inertial dampener? Ready for warp, sir. Very good. Let's punch it! Excellent, helmsman. Set a course for me. Oh! Status report! What the hell was that? There were malfunctions, bugs, errors across all decks, sir. It appears this ship is a poor design. What? That's impossible! This is a brand new ship! Check the records! Who manufactured this vessel? Starfleet records indicate corporate enterprises. Oh my god. Sir, it appears we are being hailed. On screen. <laughs> oh, you still that? Oh, still that? You actually bought the ship? <laughs> oh, people are so gullible these days. <laughs> oh, Captain Angry Joe. <laughs> I gotta give it to you. <laughs> well, welcome to your own personal hell! <laughs> I appreciate your business! Engage! Damn you, corporate! had a bit of a failure to launch, at least on the PC. One of its main selling points, co-op, wouldn't work for like five days. You want me to invite you? Doesn't look like it's gonna work. Yeah, because it's a piece of garbage! There were multiple hilarious glitches and bugs. Giant Spock! Oh, <laughs> Fear me, I am Spock! <laughs> <laughs> Look what I can do! <laughs> yeah, both of which have been uh, thankfully patched since then. I mean, the score would have been much lower had it been missing features and then that messed up. I just... You know, I actually had some thought that this one was gonna be different. I know, right? I guess things just started off on a bad foot when they decided to do nothing but focus on making it a third person shooter and nothing else, okay? Which is, you know, probably something I could have gotten over if it was actually a good one. really you know it's certainly not the worst movie license game I've ever played there's a tagline for marketing Now, instead of following the events of the upcoming film, uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, Star Trek The Game opts for an original story that fills in the gaps between the first and the second films. For hardcore fans or people that really enjoyed the reboot like me, it's an interesting proposition. 
rather than a, just a scene-by-scene -scene recreation that usually goes poorly. So, old Spock tells new Spock that uh, the Vulcans need to find a new home, and in the game we find ourselves checking in on the progress of this by visiting a space station that powers a, a, a device that's just awesome called the Genesis device. Genesis. Genesis, what's that? Don't insult my intelligence, Kirk. I, I mean the Helios device that houses the power to reshape and create new Vulcan. A living, breathing planet capable of sustaining whatever life forms we see fit to deposit on it. Fascinating. Unfortunately, the space station goes out of control. It's hurling towards the sun. It creates a rip in space and off pop out our alien menace for the game, the Gorn. Now you might remember them from the original series where our beefcake captain does battle with them in a hilarious, uh, and the guys in a hilarious rubber suit. However, here the Gorn have been updated for the modern age, uh, basically turned into smart velociraptors of various types. Clever girl. They soon steal the Helios device for themselves and it's up to Kirk, Spock, and the rest of the crew of the Enterprise to put a stop to them before they go on a murderous planet annihilating rampage across space. They conquered their galaxy. Crushing every planet they encountered. the Gorn into a story about new Vulcan seems odd, but the game does need a bad guy, and to be honest, much of Star Trek and the original series is exactly like this. Things come through rifts or out through other dimensions, buttholes, just unexpectedly all the time. So, in terms of story, I actually thought it was kind of cool. I mean, make no mistake, this isn't you know, our Star Trek, or even our father's Star Trek, there's no diplomacy, there's no clever or peaceful solutions, or exploring space and discovering new life. This is basically blow shit up Trek now, okay? It's designed as a third person cover based shooter. Now if that turns you off, get off the train now because you're gonna be disgusted as it never deviates from this formula. Ever. No! Don't give him an inch. Ambush! Their numbers are overwhelming. Surrender may be our only option. Now, it wouldn't have been so bad if they balanced these shooting gallery segments with some thoughtful analysis, some diplomacy, some exploration, but there was no room for that here. Instead, what you have is essentially an interactive movie, a very directed, linear, cinematic experience filled with plenty of cutscenes, you know, often too much so. Officer, where is the captain of this station? This way. You must hurry. Damn it! 
Is this the fun you were afraid you were going to miss? Right. Now, if you can get past the fact that it's not the thoughtful trek, it actually ends up one hell of a ride, at least for a Kirk and Spock. It's there's certainly plenty of action. Okay, that's the one thing you can say about the game. It never lets up. You're gonna be flying through space in jumpsuits, experiencing mind melds, doing some cliff jumping, soaring like birds. Uh, you're you'll be fighting some infected Starfleet, various Gorn varieties on New Vulcan, on the Gorn homeworld, and the Enterprise itself and eventually a Gorn mothership, okay? See, locations try to stay fresh and they do in fact impress visually. The backgrounds in the game look beautiful, with the exception of some low textures here and there, like the ground, for instance. Um, the PC fares better in terms of this, like character model, uh, texture quality. It's certainly not the best, but I don't agree that the graphics are terrible. At least not on the PC, okay? Even Kirk's hair is done well, and it is really hard to do hair. Uh, this game admittedly does have some high production values in certain places. What the hell is that? It appears that the Enterprise has been compromised. There's no way I can get us through that, sir. Maybe you can't, but I can. You are not considering. No, we are not considering. We'll signal when it's safe to come over. I sir. Ready? Indeed. Let's go get our damn ship back. self-respecting fan wouldn't find it a fun proposition to run around on the new Abrams Enterprise just looking at its design. I loved every second of that. I just wish I could explore and do more. You know, I want, no, I need a Western RPG that's Star Trek themed in this new universe. Because in this third person shooter, it just wasn't a priority to make anything functional. It's basically all window dressing. Beautiful window dressing. And that's a shame. Now, I don't know why, but I've always sort of liked the Gorn. Maybe it has to do with me liking space animal species like space cats and space lizards. Or maybe it's their new badass language. I'll give you control. Captain, that is inadvisable. Don't worry, I got this. Yeah, well they make for great evil baddies, okay? And the game does have some funny, well done dialogue and other banter back and forth, especially between Kirk and Spock. This is clearly a job that Mr. Scott and a few ensigns could handle. But then I'd miss all the fun. Sir, the more prudent choice would be to stay on the Enterprise and wait for a response to our hails. Oh, you're right. Lieutenant Uhura, any response to our hails? None, sir. No? Well, looks like I'm going. Now, the full cast reprises their roles, and everyone does a fantastic job voice acting. It's easily the best part of this game, okay? It sells you that this is an actual in-canon story, and it works. You know, Spock still has his relationship with Uhura. The doctor complains in his classic lines. Don't let them through! Damn it! This is a hospital, not a shooting range! Scotty is funny, and his little helper from the movie even makes a cameo. The friendship between Spock and Kirk is at the forefront, and pulled directly from the film. Everything feels right, and it leaves a smile on your face. Hell, there's even a homage to the original Trek uh, throughout with like collectible tribbles, uh, the original Gorn episode where Kirk has to make like that makeshift grenade launcher to take down uh, his Gorn aggressor. Nothing appears to be working, Captain. I can see that. Perhaps if we had another weapon. Oh, good idea. You didn't happen to sneak a photon torpedo into this place, did ya? I didn't think so. And even a gladiatorial fight between Kirk and Spock. Even if the game's mechanics 
can't quite live up to that epic final moment. Now where the game starts to fall apart is pretty much everything else, okay? The game is filled with bugs and glitches. Uh, the co-op in the PC version was completely broken and non-functional at release, which for my first playthrough left me with the AI partner and oh my god! He's a moron, okay? He's gonna frustrate the hell out of you, regularly getting stuck and for no reason at all, it, and making required co-op puzzles impossible without a checkpoint reset. Oh, god damn it! Fuck! No. No? I'm Captain Kurt, you don't tell me no. I'm the captain of the ship, Spock. I am afraid not, sir. Yes, I am. You Fix your shield, Spock! I am afraid not, Captain. You follow me! Are you serious? Spock, climb the ladder. This way! Oh my god, I don't know how to climb the ladder. Commander, help me open this. Fucker! He's useless as a combat partner, doesn't engage regularly as he should, sometimes you pass right through him, other times he acts as an immovable object just blocking you and others and just completely ignoring your orders. This was some of the worst program partner AI that I've played in a while. I'm down, Commander! Help! Captain, let me help you. Okay, help me. Oh, wait, you're stuck again. It's... What? Okay. Thankfully, the enemy's AI fares a bit better. I say a bit because, you know, if they aren't charging your position like suicidal zombies, they are hiding behind cover as their big heads and tails stick out from behind the boxes in hilarious fashion. However, upping the difficulty does uh, to hard helps a bit, and giving credit where credit is due, later levels and varieties of Gorn actually use tactics like popping smoke or uh, full out retreating to regroup. Had the enemy AI been as bad as your partner, this game would be next to worthless, okay? The cover system in a third-person shooter is a pretty important aspect. Unfortunately, it's crap here. You know, I would take damage as shots would just pass through my cover from time to time or for, from weird angles. I often found that just side strafing or standing behind cover in you know, a generic way was just like a better tactic, okay, instead of actually sucking into cover. At certain points of the game that offers up optional objectives, commendations to try to play uh, the game stealthily, but it offers little to no feedback on how you're doing. So combine that with the silly ass AI, and it's really best to just ignore Starfleet's recommendation, okay? F that, and do what the game is clearly designed to do, which is shoot them all in the face! Shit. <sighs> There are numerous other gameplay issues, some of which break balance or immersion. Uh, the phaser stun upgrade can one hit nearly anything in the game, making most weapons other than that use useless as you know, you can just run up and melee them. X knocks them out immediately. <laughs> Uh, platforming sections look terrible with some unable to fail, you know, sections like walking across beams. It takes attention away. And after every fucking cutscene or revive, you're annoyingly forced back to your default original weapon instead of the weapon that you had equipped. Okay? The game makes a noble attempt to include the tricorder, uh, you know, 
And thankfully, in terms of gameplay mechanics, it's certainly more useful than, say, the motion tracker from Aliens. But naturally, when I first whipped it out, I was like, I was trying to scan everything from dead bodies to blood on the ground to various other, you know, tech items. Disappointingly, it doesn't work like that, okay? Again, it's very directed, okay? Scanning puts up a visual effect that highlights only set interactive objects, which you can hack yourself, or you can order the AI to do it for you, if you trust the AI. Uh, in this regard, it did it most of the time. However, there are a few that require uh, both characters uh, at the controls to complete. These average mini games get the job done. Uh, at least in single player, I found myself doing everything I could to skip them. I mean, later on, you can start to scan bodies of new enemy types, though, and various items to get snippets of funny text from Scotty, or you can a activate sprinkler systems to put out fires. Help! Hey, over here. You have to put out this fire. You may be able to manually trigger the fire suppression. Thank you. If you weren't here, well, I don't know what. But unless told directly to do so through a cutscene, it never works like you would expect it to. Which, to be fair, would be rather difficult to do, you know. I did, however, enjoy the mechanic as soon as you start to gain some actual XP from scanning and completing commendations, you can then spend that XP uh, to upgrade one selectable aspect of the tricorder uh, to do cool things like disable enemy weapons to get the jump on them. Now that was fucking awesome, and I wish more stuff like that was in the game. Unfortunately, a lot of the other options there have uh, no use at all, such as hiding the body, because the AI just isn't smart enough for that, and not once did a situation arise where that would be useful in the least. Okay? Finally, it's not Star Trek without the Enterprise. Uhura, get me Starfleet Command, so we'll set a pursuit course. We're going after them? So one question on everyone's mind is, can you take control of the actual ship? Hell no! Okay, not unless you count a damn confusing lazy turret sequence. And while it's visually impressive, it's got no substance. It's an on-rail shooter. Worse, I kept getting killed because I didn't realize that for some reason, Starfleet thought it would be a good idea to play red light, green light with their shields. Mr. Chekhov, uh, please raise the shields. And lower them. And raise them again. Mr. Chekhov, please lower the shields. And raise them. Lower the shields. Raise them. Lower them. Raise them. Lower them. Raise them. Lower them! Raise lower! 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 Lower the shields! You engage your shields only when the missiles are about to impact, okay? Only through trial and error did I figure out that one with no explanation or logic to it. It's, you know, it's, it's rather insulting that this is the only interaction you get with the actual Enterprise, okay? Playing as Captain Kirk, though, I powered through the game myself in about eight hours, um, which is substantial for one of these types of games. I expected it to be a lot less. However, the game was marketed as a great co-op experience. Except for it not fucking working. You can see that in my previous video where I brought attention to that fact and, and helped get us, helped get a group of us on Steam noticed on the game's uh, Twitter account. Some days later, uh, the game's representing PR department called and sent out an email saying that it had been fixed, only it hadn't, at least not for me. You know, I offered to test it with one of their QA guys and they definitely were committed to getting it to work as fast as possible, okay? And it did get fixed. So finally, when I was able to play this co-op, 
it essentially breaks down to press X to cooperatively pry open doors. Is that seriously the best these game developers can come up with? The mini games and the co-op activities are mostly doors and hacking. Maybe once or twice throughout the whole game, you'll have Spock or Kirk uh, have completely separate like little objectives or events. Like when Spock is attacked by a Gorn while you are hanging off a ledge. But they are few and far between and just underutilized. Uh, no, the actual benefit of co-op is to replace the fucking terrible partner AI. And, and you can rest easy knowing that you can share your pain with somebody else rather than playing the game alone. Okay? We are going to have to time our movement. <laughs> Elastic man. Though the one innovative thing I could think of was a space exterior level where you get to use a teleporter gun to teleport your partner to different platforms to get across this crumbling station, but this isn't, this isn't Portal. No, I mean, it's restricted to pad-to-pad -pad teleports only, which are conveniently placed all across the section of, on walls and under and uh, who the hell designed to place all these pads on the walls and the ceilings, okay? This stupid. Cold, mindless, and capable of human emotion. Kind of like Spock. From my experience, Dr. Human Emotion is highly overrated. And it should be mentioned that they didn't even bother to make the game uh, drop in, drop out co-op. So if you try to have a friend join you while you're playing, you're going to be restarting. So asking us to pay $60, fans of Star Trek, for a completely linear game with little to no replay value is just not going to cut it anymore. I can see if it was reduced in price or a budget game, perhaps even a digital download. With this production value, it would have been pretty damn impressive for one of those. But no, instead it demands full price. The final verdict for Star Trek The Game is a 4 out of 10. It may not be the worst movie license game I've played, but it doesn't do anything notable or different to break the stigma of these types, okay? It offers every bad trope in recent crappy games like a tacked-on upgrade system, a simplistic hacking minigame, suicidal AI, and a wonky-looking edge gameplay. All eight hours of linear shooting gallery gameplay, okay? In a Star Trek game! Okay, if Digital Extremes weren't able or allowed by Paramount to make a more worthwhile Star Trek licensed game, neither company has any right to ask full price. It's insulting and it's borderline cashing in, especially when this game was moved to coincide and cross promote with the new movie to boost its sales. You know, and they do that while simultaneously refusing to use that extra development time to fix any of the numerous bugs or issues that were in the game when it released. Only the authenticity of the environments, the, the excellent sound design, uh, the voice acting of the actual actors from the films makes this game somewhat playable for new, forgiving Star Trek fans that just need to see everything. And that's only if you're willing to concede all of the above, okay? I would save your $60 and instead take six more friends to see Star Trek Into Darkness or eventually buy either of the movies on DVD or Blu-ray, okay? Paramount, you still get your money, right? You're happy. So, you just rent this one instead. We are still waiting for a god good Star Trek game that nails the atmosphere, the authenticity, and the theme of diplomacy as much as combat, okay? But this being a third person shooter and having to conform to that genre, it misses some of the point in what makes good Star Trek media. I've got buckets of ideas on how to make one. Hopefully someone will realize the potential of this exploration, away teams, emphasis on both diplomatic and aggressive combat, and the immersiveness of allowing us to walk around on the ship as we, you know, do here, only actually have it, you know, have purpose. If that happens one day, Paramount, 
I will sit here and scream that that game's worth every penny of its person's price, every chance I get, I will scream that game's glory from the mountaintops. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. And then I have you around. I have my arm around. Yeah. <laughs> so it's almost like I'm holding you towards me. That's what Kurt does. Okay, you ready? Go. And go. No, no correctly. <laughs> like you're gonna bite my face. <laughs> 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 <laughs>